Good afternoon and welcome to the Strip Tilling PLC investor presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so. Before we begin, I'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand over to Richard Barton, CEO. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining um, our investor meet call today. Uh, I'm Richard Barton, the CEO of Stripsini. Um, the company was founded in 1957 by my father. Uh, and I started working with him about 30 years ago. Uh, at the time, we had, I think, eight employees, and um, we, we became a public limited company in February 2022, just over a year ago. With me today are Adam Robson, our executive chairman, and also Adam Levan, our CFO. And I'd just like to ask Adam Robson, first of all, to introduce himself, and then Adam, and then I'll talk a bit further on the following slides. Adam. Yes, hello, Adam Robson speaking. Very good to be talking to you all. Uh, my automated background started with Perkins Engines in Peterborough, uh, merged into the Varity Group, then into the Lucas Varity Group, then into TRW Automotive, where I worked on everything from radars to cars to diesel injection systems. So a, a, a broad background on the business development side um, in, in the automotive sector. Uh, hi, I'm Adam Levan. So <clears throat> I've also got a, a long history in automotive. I'm a qualified chartered accountant. Um, I did a lot of work for KPMG in the Midlands and Germany uh, on uh, automotive clients. Um, and I've worked at uh, Jaguar Land Rover uh, Two and in the other, and in other tier one um, suppliers prior to joining um, uh, strip tinning, um, and I've also worked on a lot of uh, high growth type projects um, as part of uh, as part of my experience, which is it's quite applicable to uh, what we're doing on the EV side here at strip tinning. Adam, Adam, thank you. Um, so if I can just start to talk to you about uh, 2022 and the the highlights. Um, certainly, a very difficult year for us. Uh, I think our most our most difficult in our 60 year history. We did our IPO in February 20 February the 16th last year, and I think seven days later the Russians invaded Ukraine. This had a big impact on um, our customer base, as we had three significant customers in Russia. We were suffering from all sorts of inflationary pressures, the cost of energy, raw materials, labour rates. So a really really difficult start uh, for us as as a, as a public limited company. Uh, our financial results, unfortunately, obviously were poor. The underlying EBITDA was minus 2.2 million. And this is after adjusting for about 1.6 million of, of some non-recurring one-off items. Uh, the net cash is uh, minus 1.4. Uh, however, this is before we have a new CID facility, which is bringing us uh, plenty of headroom. Um, through the year, I think because of the pressures we were under, certainly we have made significant improvements operationally. We had a new managing director that started us shortly after the IPO called Mark Perrins, who has a big automotive background, and he's made lots of improvements uh, from the manufacturing point of view for, the, for both glazing and EV. Um, despite the difficult year, nevertheless, our glazing order book is extremely strong. The overall order book for both Glazy and EV stands at nearly four million pounds, which is very encouraging. We put through some two rounds of significant price increases to our customers during the year. These were received. Uh, the customers, I wouldn't say were happy, but we managed to stay friends with the customers and we certainly haven't lost any. Uh, we've removed some of our loss making product lines and are certainly focused on uh, the more profitable items moving forward. Very, very encouragingly, uh, we, we've achieved positive EBITDA for every month so far this year, um, which which tells us that the, the, certainly the future is looking much brighter and the, really the turnaround we feel has been, has been completed. It feels to us as though we're really out of the woods. Um, generally, the market is is 
starting to come in our favor we believe over 45 percent of our sales are already into uh, electric and hybrid vehicles compared to the sort of average for europe of about 37 percent uh, we have lots of new opportunities for electric vehicles we had an exhibition recently at the stuttgart battery show uh, we had probably 32 leads that that we consider to be quite significant and it's still the same story we're hearing that the market is extremely busy the customers are really actively trying to develop new sources for cell contact systems and flexible printed circuits. There are other producers out there in the market, but but that really we, we have this ability to do the flexible printed circuit as well as the cell contact systems. So we're offering something different from some of the competition and we're working more in the smaller and the mid, mid section of the markets. From a glazing point of view, uh, the car industry is up. The new car industry is in Europe up 17%, so that's all in our favor. And particularly the use of flexible printed circuits and some of our products into roof glazing uh, are becoming more popular on, on higher tech vehicles as they're, as they're being released. We've also taken the opportunity during the year to really have a reorganization of the company. Um, we've now moved all of the, the automotive glazing production into one unit. You can see that which is what we call our unit seven on the left hand side. Mark Perrins again has driven this through. That's brought a number of efficiencies and has reduced our scrap count. And with, with the, some of the money and the grant that we raised during 2022 has been spent on the new um, EV line, which is fully operational that's actually quite a big room it looks quite small but it's part of a, um, a, a clean air module within the building and we're, we're very pleased now that, that that line is fully operational so i think probably over to adam robson now the things we did in the last year if we talked about it at the last call as well if some of you are on that as well is to get clearer our, our market focus because what we found was we were in a, an, an enormously growing market with a huge number of opportunities that we couldn't respond to and all so we need to be able to focus our resources <clears throat> on the left hand side is is what we call the mid market which is where we're finding the most attraction this, this is um either very small volume vehicles such as new electric vehicles sports cars um, and that's where we've had our first production success. And we're, in fact, in production on a number of uh, small electric vehicles already. Um, but that, that, that market actually moves into other areas of quite significant volume. There are truck projects in there. There are specialist bus projects there. There are new autonomous vehicles like the one shown in the, the picture, which is, a, is an Amazon-developed vehicle. Um, there, there are small mobility solutions, e-mobility, uh, little delivery vans for use in city centers and so forth. And there's the off-highway uh, off sector. So we're actually finding that's a, a very, quite a substantial market, but also particularly plays to our strength, which Richard described earlier, of being able to provide the integrated engineering solution in the form of a cell contact system highly adapted to the specific needs of each application. So that's where we're having a lot of success and where we have our initial sales. We then are looking in, in time to develop into the mid-volume um, market, which is a little higher, tends to be automotive um, or, or high-volume truck. We have some leads in that area as well that we're we're working on at the moment. Um, and then on the right hand side, there is the very high volume market. This would be, you know, new battery platform for the, the VW Golf or, or, and so on. The what, what we've determined, there are very large electronics manufacturers pursuing that segment at the moment. And that doesn't seem like an effective place for us to compete. So we are, we are focused then on that, that left-hand mid-market side, where, as I say, we, we feel we have a particular advantage through a differentiation of being able to offer an integrated solution. Uh, and secondly, the very big, this, this is a market that's growing so fast, there's 
there, there are more opportunities that everyone can deal with. What we're finding is the large competitors are focused on the right-hand side of the page, which are very, very, very big contracts and make sense for them. But they virtually refuse to supply the left-hand mid-market. So it's a leash which is we're finding um, that we have quite a unique positioning in and we seem to be one of the preferred suppliers uh, for customers in, in, in that segment. We've got, if we move on to the next slide, we'll talk about the specific opportunities we're working on, but we have a, a large number of, of opportunities in that, in that mid market. We, we've got our new production line ready and two new customers uh, have already now quality audited that line and it is put, um, passed those audits with flying colors. We haven't failed any audits in case there's any doubt about that. Um, we've been spending our serve grant, which was worth 1.4 million, which has allowed us to put in place uh, this, this higher volume, highly automated uh, line. And that, that's in production now. Um, and, and we have a second 1.1 million grant that we're, we're applying for. And we hope to see a decision on that by the end of June, when, when, when we hope we'll be able to announce some good news. What's significant about these grants is that from a cash perspective, they, they go straight to the bottom line. They, um, the, 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 they're, they're, they're providing cash for, for overheads and capital expenditure, which we were making anyway. So they're, they're highly attractive to us. Um, we also have a, a small APC grant that we've applied for to, to, to do a feasibility study uh, for moving into the higher volume production, which we see happening uh, in, in some years time. But a, a, a feasibility study um, is a first grant securing further grant funding for that. Um, I see James H has just asked the question, would we consider to buy TrackWise if it came available to scale up our production? And the answer is yes, it would be a very relevant um, investment they've made in that high volume area. And we think it would be attractive for us to add our automotive credibility, which I think has been one of the things that holds them back today. The um, the 1.6 million of capex we spend has increased our own capacity to 220,000 flex units per annum, uh, which which is a good start for us. Um, our first major production nomination, as I said, we're already in 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 production on three smaller platforms, but we have a very high volume with with, with annual sales. Um, uh in, in certainly in several million per annum initially and with the potential to rise to over 10 million pounds per annum and we hope to get that uh nomination uh in the next quarter in the current quarter quarter three of this year when when obviously we announced it we're a mo moment we are making samples on that program we we're delivering today the b4 sample so this is the, i think the the um fourth set of samples we've provided um that, that in itself was worth 0.8 million to us this year um we have another important nomination that we're working towards as well on, on another off-highway vehicle battery pack um and we have a, another one that's worth noting for an on-highway battery pack as well where we're looking to get the first samples but we're not yet at the production nomination stage. So there's a lot of activity. As Richard said, when we went to the Stuttgart battery show, we came back with 32 good quality leads, most of which were in that mid-market segment. And um, we're, we're in the process of following up with the, those customers. We think that will lead to a significant boost in our, our active production line, um, sorry, active pipeline for the EV segment. Um, some of you who, who've been on these calls recall and been following us will, will, will recall that we um, lost a lead customer just over a year ago 
um, that 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 was a a, a Croatian specialist vehicle uh, electric vehicle demo, developer for a German OEM. Uh, that that was a very unfortunate incident. I think you know it, it resulted from a number of organizational changes on their side, and perhaps. We were slightly trying to run before we could walk at that time. We learned a lot of lessons from that, and we've um, worked through those lessons in our in, in in everything we've put into the current production line and how we're working with our our current customers. So we're 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 certainly a much stronger um, organization than we were, and increasingly confident that we'll be winning new nominations, as they say, in quarter three of this year. Um, Steve Kay has just asked, what are our typical contract lengths? Um, a typical contract length is five plus years. Because uh, people are developing a platform for a vehicle, a typical automotive platform has a seven-year life or even 10-year life, it may go through cosmetic upgrades but that doesn't change the fundamental platform. So, so whilst we mostly see an initial nomination expressed as five years production, we'll often expect them to last seven or 10 years. Um, moving on to now the glazing side of the business. Um, th this year has, what, what you'll, we're seeing is um, that glazing sales will be flat this year but that masks a number of different things. We, we've raised our prices on average by 30%. And so that should lead us to a 30% growth in, in the, the revenue numbers. But, but as, as Richard told you, we've eliminated a lot of loss making products as well, which removes 30%. So net net, our glazing business is flat this year. But we're now Having got those pricing increases behind us, which were obviously a major distraction and, and for, for us with our customers, we're now seeing growth in our very important buzz bar business. Um, we're beginning to, to re-engage with a set of new customers, in, including on the all, all, um, um, arch, architectural glass size, which is taking us into new markets. Our tungsten market, we've, we've got one large RFQ out at the moment that could, could grow that significantly. And in connectors, we've been quite selective now about the work we go after. We, 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 we learned lessons about where we were losing money, but we're particularly focused on uh, new roof glazing applications, which is the a very innovative area. And if any of you have been on a a dreamliner or, or, or in certain offices, you see glass, which when you touch it, you turn a switch, increase it, uh, changes color to become uh, sun resistant. And all of that needs specialist um, connectors, which we, we are equipped to make. And are indeed, we are shipping today on one very major program. But we have here, I say a first prototype purchase order received. That's the first pro tribe for this new OEM. We're already in production with those products for another program. Um, we're also working interestingly with one of our major customers on a program to put LEDs within a truck glass. Um, a heads up display doesn't work on a truck window because the angle of the of the windscreen is more vertical. So, so you can't get the reflection. And people are now looking at embedding LEDs within the glass um, to, to put a sort of head up display for truck drivers. Again, that needs a specialist connector and, and we're working on that. Similarly, camera bracket flexes uh, within the glass as more and more cameras, particularly on autonomous vehicles and the preparations for autonomous vehicles. Um, and we have another major RFQ we're working on now for another luxury SUV. I, I think as, as as Richard was showed you on the slide earlier, forty five percent of all our sales today are into either electric vehicles or um, uh, hybrid vehicles, which are obviously the highest growing part of the market. Um, and, and so, you know, we do try to focus on these higher volume platforms and higher value added platforms. 
Um, and as I said earlier, we, we've received some new um, uh, purchase orders, both both for a smart glass uh, architectural application um, uh, 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 and for smart glass applications within the automotive sector. The other thing we've been able to do this year is substantially Im improve our business um, and particularly on the glazing connector side where we were losing money last year. So whilst we have put through 30% price increases, what you'll see is that our at the bottom of the table there, our gross margins have improved from minus 13% to plus 15%. So that's a 28% increase. But I'm sure you recognize there's been a lot of inflation in this period in uh, labor costs, energy costs, material costs. And so we've had to offset those other inflationary increases with, with a substantial um, increase in productivity. And you see that on, on, on this chart that we, we've reduced particularly materials wastage and through better purchasing, we've reduced uh, materials as a percent of sales from 48 to 37 percent. Although the head, the, the sales are roughly similar, we've, we've substantially reduced our head count from 98 to 74 on the shop floor. And that's increased sales per head from about 55,000 to 68,000 per head. We've also reduced shipping costs, which had rocketed, um, particularly post-Brexit. We're, we're finding smarter ways to ship now. So all in all, that the business has improved substantially this year. And of course, in 23, you're only seeing the part year effects. There'll be further, there are further improvements to come, for further automation programs to come as well. And we expect to see further improvements in gross margin as, as we go into um, 2024. The, la the last thing that I particularly have been working on is, is partnerships. We, we're, we're a relatively small player in our industry uh, and we're constantly looking for, for partners to help our, us grow. Um, we're, we're looking particularly in China about the potential to, to develop a partner, not to supply the full CCS, but possibly the flex element of that, where there, there's a lot of installed capacity in China. Um, we, we're looking to, to develop with one particularly CCS tier one, a preferred supplier relationship. Um, and, and, and that is indeed be beginning to bear some fruit. Um, we, we're looking at an engineering partnership, um, to, 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 to help us both accelerate our development and provide more innovative solutions to our customer. And, and we, we, particularly with one engineering group now, we have a very strong relationship. And on the back of that, I think will 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 take us soon to taking production into North America. When we're always alert to to M and A opportunities, or, or, although none of those are are actively um, active at this moment. And on the glazing side. We're exploring uh, opportunities to develop our trading relationships. And with, with one partner, we're, we're now looking at a, a possible JV to move manufacturing into a low cost manufacturing uh, economy. The timing hasn't been for that right for that uh, so far, but, but those discussions will, will be ongoing. So Adam, why will you, Take us through the, the 22 financial results. Yep, so the 22 financial results uh, echo the narrative that uh, Richard and Adam have given you. Um, <clears throat> so, as Richard said, it's been a, a very poor set of results, um, but there are some crumbs of comfort we can try to take from it. Uh, in terms of sales down about a million on last year, um, but it should be factored in that we had 1.5 million of sales um, that we would have made to the Russian market prior to um, the Ukraine uh, uh, that, that uh, obviously uh, wouldn't, didn't happen post the um, 
invasion by Russia of, of Ukraine. Um, so as soon as those factories got mothballed, um, we we lost that um, we lost that revenue. So if you adjust for that, there is sales momentum there. Um, connectors would have been up, or the glazing side of the business would have been up, and EV sales trebled. And again, that's despite the loss of the um, uh, major EV contract. So we have momentum with our other customers as well. Um, in terms of gross margin, uh, that fell to 5%, uh, a, a terrible result. There was a number of factors um, in that. Part of that was product margin. The, the mix was unfavorable. The first part of the year um, in particular, uh, our profitable, very profitable buzz bar and tungsten sales, which are uh, very late, very low labor content, very high automation content. Um, uh, they were down as customers de-stopped from 2021. And I think that was because the market didn't pick up as as, as quickly as people want, as people anticipated. Um, they wanted the, expected the COVID bounce uh, and the demand was there, but the microchips weren't. So although we don't rely on microchips, our customers do, not as many cars were being built. So we suffered a little bit on that. Uh, and then we still had problems with um, uh, staff uh, production and uh, reliability of uh, material supply. Um, so that was very, very disruptive to staff, um, to production planning, uh, which caused excess freight, uh, excess overtime, excess temporary labor. Uh, and we obviously made a conscious decision to make sure our staff were paid the national living wage. And then on top of that, we had the um, inflationary pressures from our supply chain as well, uh, that are well documented. Um, so that, that significantly damaged gross margin over the year. Um, we also suffered on stock write-offs, um, a lot of it linked to um, the loss of the Russian um, uh, loss of the Russian market. So we're actively seeking a way to reuse and redeploy that stock, um, but prudence has dictated we, we have to make a, a provision for it within the accounts. On the, uh, the uh, one thing I should say, half one, half two, uh, half two was showing momentum and improvement. So um, uh, internally, we, we had been showing 9% um, gross margin um, before provisions in half one. Uh, that had risen to 17% in half two. Uh, sales were a million pounds higher in uh, half two as well. Um, so it was... Uh, 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 out of the 10.2, so, so virtually 60% in the second half versus 40% in the first. So we have momentum, which we've taken into 2023, uh, and gross margin is is over 30% now year to date in um, 2023. Uh, so, so things are, are moving well on that front. In terms of the overheads, we suffered in 2022, um, a big increase compared to 2021 prior year. Uh, the factors in that... Uh, included a uh, big rise in energy costs, as would be expected. Um, we obviously had the big inf continued investment in the EV side of the business, and it wasn't deemed appropriate with the momentum we had to cut despite the loss of that contract. Uh, the staff were redeployed on, on making a success of the other pipeline that we've got that Adam was describing. Uh, and then as we, as we try to get firm foundations to move forward, um, we picked up uh, uh, significant extra costs um, from the factory moves that uh, and kit outs that we made to increase automa automation and improve production efficiency uh, and, and get quality um, up as well, re reduce our scrap. Um, so th those, invest those um, programs led by Mark Perrins uh, obviously came as a cost, but have got benefits going forward for the long, for the long term. And then, if you want to be truly like for like, uh, obviously the, the overhead is now including a significant cost for operating as a as a PLC, unfortunately. Mm. Moving on to the balance, uh, so sorry, so we have adjusted for obviously for uh, um, the, the uh, for some of the non recurring charges to get to our um, adjusted EBITDA of two point two million for the um, for the year when you take out those non-recurring IPO costs, some of the restructuring and the factory move. Um, so, so still um, uh, not good, but, um, uh, but that's, that's what we're turning around from in 2023. Um, in terms of um, uh, balance sheet, 
Um, the um, uh, we have uh, uh, we've uh, we've continued investing in the business as uh, as Adam was saying. Um, so uh, we did suffer an impairment on an intangible assets from um, uh, write offs from capitalised costs to do with the EV contract. Uh, but we've been doing work on inventory management, carried on the capital investment program. We've we're making um, increased R and D tax credit claims. They they've been historically too low for a business with 16 patents about to become 17. Um, uh, for the amount of R and D effort that goes into our product, um, so that 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 that's helping. And we've paid down significant amounts of uh, of trade payables compared to 2021. Um, so so cash has gone out the door. Um, but it's, um, it's it's given the business a, a firm footing. Um, so we've ended the year with £1.3 million pounds of cash, um, uh, The um, uh, despite the investment programme. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, a lot of money was burnt on um, funding the losses that were incurred in 2022 and paying down the payables. But we ended the year with £1.3 million, um, And if uh, unless there's any burning questions on that, moving into the, the kind of liquidity side of things. Uh, we continued our investment programme in the first part of 2023. Uh, we closed end of April with around about 0.3 million. Um, uh, and May, we had neutral cash burn. Uh, so that, that's a, a, a pretty good step, a milestone. Uh, and then with, with grants, R&D tax credits and the improvements in, in business, uh, we, um, uh, we we slow um, and uh, we, we slow all the cash burn and then we're covered by the financing facility that Richard mentioned at the beginning of the invest uh, beginning of the presentation uh, so that we have good liquidity, good visibility um, going through this year and 2024. Uh, and all of these cash flows have been put together, excluding the potential for any new grants in 2024. Uh, so um, we're, we're in good shape. Um, liquidity-wise, to carry on our program of investment, keep the business moving forward. Good, thank you, Adam. Um, we'll talk talk a little bit the outlook. Just before I do, Steve Kay had just going back a bit asked a question: With a large pipeline of opportunities, how do you manage executing these from a sales perspective, along with competing with the larger suppliers? And and the answer on that, Steve, is um, that we we compete with them by outservicing the larger suppliers. As I said, they're very focused on the very high volume contracts, and um, is is the first thing. So they tend to be ignoring the mid market. Secondly, on they are used to a structure where they provide the cell as a tier one the cell contact system, but they buy in the flex from another source. We are able to do that as a one-stop shop where we provide an, integrate, an integrated service for that. And out of that, we're able to provide a more flexible, and more responsive engineered solution. So I think we out-service the customers. We provide a, a very customized service and we're, we're very, very responsive to them. Um, and our organization and our production facility is tuned for the mid-market size of opportunities. So I think it's all of those things together, which seems to be working for us. Um, on the outlook, um, certainly, as we've said, last year was a, a transitional year for us. But I think, you know, the positive we take out of it, we came out of it much leaner. We've learned a lot and we've improved a lot. And that's definitely showing through in 2023 so we've been ebitda positive every month so far this year up to the the flash results in may um which we're finding it very encouraging and i hope you you've all seen the 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 market expectations put out by our brokers and we certainly um expect to meet those market expectations for the year um we we more, more fundamentally, that's putting us on a, a, a sound footing for growth next year. We've talked about the growth opportunities on both the EV side and um, 
on the glazing side. So we, we expect significant sales growth next year. And, and with that, and with our ever-increasing um, productivity, we we're, expect we're raising to raise profit margins as well in 2024. So we think uh, we're, we're very much on an, uh, an upward trajectory. Um, the first of those big and really strategic new EV nominations, we, we hope to be able to announce to you in, in the coming quarter. Um, and uh, as, uh, as Adam said, our, our cash position um, remains satisfactory. We're, we're able to continue to invest in our business and fund it as, as we need to do. So we have very clear priorities for, for, for this year. It's, it's to deliver these lead customers and lead projects for EV in particular, but also for glazing that will, will drive our growth next year and move us strategically forward. Um, it's to continue to improve our capabilities, quality, delivery, productivity in both EV and glazing to, to, to retain uh, the, the support of our customers and grow our margins. Um, and we're hoping to secure new grants. We told you about the two new grants that we've applied for, uh, worth 1.3 million between them. Um, and we've got further asset back funding to, to, to secure with, with the next round of investments into our production facility. Um, we will be very pleased to, to take any more questions any of you may have. Um, and, and if not, um, uh, I'll ask uh, Richard perhaps just to say a few closing words. Yes, thank thank you, Adam, and also Adam. Um, so, in 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 summary, uh, uh, certainly a very tough year for our first year as a public limited company. Uh, but uh, I hope you can see a, a huge amount of work has been done to strategically position us to be in a better place for this year and the years coming forward. We obviously managed to maintain our investment program, um, and the we hope there to be some very good news to be announced in the next quarter or so the investor pack that you've been looking at today is available on our website for you to take away um and i think really just to say thank you adam and adam and thanks for tuning in and i think i can perhaps hand back to lily now thank you adam richard adam thank you very much for your presentation this afternoon and for responding to the questions throughout the presentation and of course the company will review any further questions submitted today and we will publish those responses on the investor meet company platform could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and I'm sure will be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Strip Tilling Holdings PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. Good afternoon to you all.